Ramona Africa describing the police bombing of the Move House in Philadelphia in 1985. In November, the Philadelphia City Council formally apologized for the police bombing, which killed six adults and five children and destroyed the surrounding 60 homes. Memories of the attack that killed the 11 people were resurfaced last week, when the University of Pennsylvania and Princeton University acknowledged that for the past 36 years, anthropologists have been using the bones of at least one of the bombing victims, 14-year-old Tree Africa. In a video course posted online called Real Bones, Adventures in Forensic Anthropology, Penn Museum curator Janet Mong, a visiting Princeton University professor, holds bones thought to be of Tree Africa. The video is no longer available for public viewing, but anyone who already registered for the course can still access it. Democracy Now! obtained a copy from the Africa family. This is a clip. This is one of these cases where the material has some flesh on it, which, you know, is not uncommon, actually, in forensics and forensic anthropology. Uh, in this case, uh, there is some soft tissue, which is actually remaining, and the bones were actually burned as well. So it's got quite a complicated history. So I'll pick up just for a moment and show you that this is you know, really the, the tissue which is present on the specimen. It's not uh, a lot, but uh, absolutely it's there. This is the tendon that goes to uh, rectus femoris. It's actually intact and it's there. The femur is um, uh, uh, with much less tissue associated with it, but you still have in the fovea capitis the anchoring ligament, which is present in the head of the femur. Uh, the bones are, uh, I mean, you know, we would say like juicy, you know, meaning that you can tell that they are of a recently deceased individual. They have a lot of sort of sheen to them, at least this one does. And that is uh, because, of course, there's still uh, marrow in the marrow cavity, and it's sort of leaching, basically, out and into the bone, so it gives that kind of slick sort of appearance. If you smell it, it doesn't actually smell bad, but it smells uh, just kind of greasy, like an older-style grease. Since this video was reported on last week, the Penn Museum <clears throat> and the University of Pennsylvania have apologized to the Africa family for allowing human remains recovered from the move house to be used for research and teaching, and for retaining the re remains for far too long. The bones are reportedly now in the possession of Alan Mann, a professor emeritus at Princeton, who apparently received them from the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's Office for forensic analysis in 1985. Mann told the outlet Inside Higher Education he's working to return, quote, the upper end of a thigh bone and a small part of one pelvic bone to the examiner's office, and that he was, quote, sorry to learn that there's a perception that what I did with the move human remains was wrong, he said. The medical examiner's office has said that if the remains are returned to their office, they would attempt to locate next of kin to claim them. This controversy comes as the Penn Museum just apologized last week for holding more than 1,000 stolen skulls of enslaved people in its Morton collection. Samuel Morton was a 19th-century white supremacist researcher who directed workers to pull the bones from unmarked graves. For more, we go to Philadelphia.